All right, welcome back everybody. In this video, we're going to learn how to obtain MetaMask and just kind of really quickly go over what MetaMask is, the purpose of it, um, and why we essentially need it. So in our first video, we showed how to download a uh, VMware tools, set up a VM Linux. Um, now um, we need to do Chromium. So let's go ahead and add this to our favorites. Now, of course, you can do this in Firefox, but I'm going to do this in Chromium just because a lot of the stuff we're going to do in the future um, is just easier using Chromium. Um, so let me go ahead and get rid of this bookmarks bar. App shortcut, I don't care to see that. Um, but otherwise, everything looks good. I don't know why it's still showing me those. Um, bookmarks but we can go ahead and remove them as so okay so let's talk turkey let's go get made a mask okay we're gonna go here and as you see this is a crypto wallet well, what does that even mean what what the heck is a crypto wallet and why can't I just hold on to my crypto in my pocket well I hate to be the bearer of bad news, you cannot hold physically your crypto wallet. Now by wallet, it doesn't mean like the wallet you hold cash in per se. The idea, uh, metaphorically, exists uh, that this digital thing will hold a bunch of ones and zeros that basically hold your account ID, much like a debit card, if you will. That ID is linked to something that states that, and anonymously in this case, you have X amount of crypto, let's say dollars, yen, you know, euros, whatever you want to call it in your fiat. But essentially, this holds your money, much like a bank account. So let's go ahead and just download it, shall we? Let's go ahead and download now. And in this case, and again, it's for multiple browsers. Now, if you heard of NFTs, this is what most people are using um, for NFTs. And that'll be another video. But let's go ahead and install a MetaMask for Chrome. Now, you might say, Lance, but we're using Chromium. Well, if you remember from the last video, I mentioned Chromium is the open source version of Chrome. So you can still run Chrome add-ons in Chromium. So let's go ahead and hit Add to Chrome. And make sure that you understand it can read and change all your data on websites you visit, display notifications, modify data you copy and paste. Now. Obviously, that's, you know, not something to be too concerned about with MetaMask, but, you know, you never know what's out there, what updates could be hacked into there, blah, blah, blah. So think about it um, before you do it. But in this case, we trust in MetaMask, right? So we'll go ahead and click Add Extension. Okay, in a matter of moments, we have MetaMask. Voila, right? So... How cool is that though? Um, so we got this little guy. Now, another thing I like to do is go ahead and pin this, especially, I don't wanna click on this puzzle piece every time. I can just have this, right? And as you see, we can't go further unless we get started. So let's do that. So if you already have a wallet, awesome. Don't use it for this uh, course. Let's go ahead and, um, I'm sorry, we wanna create a wallet, not import it. Um, so let's go ahead and create a wallet. Even if you have a wallet, do not import it, but you could, just really quickly to show you, this is the path it would take, right? So you would say I agree or not, whatever, but here you would put in your seed, fade, uh, seed fa uh, phrase and uh, you know a password. But in this case, we don't know what that means, right? Because we've never used MetaMask or anything like that. So let's go ahead and create a wallet. Now, I'm not going to help improve MetaMask, love them, but no thank you. So let's go ahead and create a password real quick. Something we will remember. You know, you should try to make it a difficult password um, if it's going to contain your real money. But again, like we talked about in the other video right now, I'm not too concerned with that. So I have agreed and let's create it. Remember this password in this secret backup phrase, I will tell you right now, you lose it, you lose everything. 
There is no bank that's going to help you reset your pin or anything like that. You lose this, you give this out, that's it. You might as well go dump all your money in the trash. Um, so let's go ahead and reveal our secret words. Now, as you see, we have these secret words. Now, this is going to allow us to get into our account in the future. Now, as it says here, download the secret backup phrase, right? So it'll download it as a text file for you, as you see. And another thing you could always do if you don't want to download it, don't trust it, you could go use something else. We have, you know, multiple um, note type taking things um, that exist in Linux that you could, you know, download and, and install G notes, etc. I won't go through it, but we've already downloaded it. Now, let's just make sure we actually have it downloaded, right? Let's just take a gander, shall we? So let's go ahead and go into our downloads and let's just double click. Perfect, we know it exists. Now, copy that to a USB stick, put it in a Google Drive. Don't let anybody know what it means. Keep it vague. Nobody's gonna search for E31 whatever in your Google Drive or whatever else, right? Um, it's just not going to happen. Um, so let's go ahead and hit next. Now, remember, if you just lost your password, you're screwed. I told you to keep it, right? So I can't paste it either, right? Which is clever and smart. And this is great on them so that you cannot, you know, mess around here. You need to have this code. So that said... Let's go ahead and push this over here. Let's go ahead and put this as so, okay? So what do we need to know? And this must be in order. So we need to know that it's quality, right? We need to know um, that it is plastic, minor, engine, pony, crowd, amount, wine, thunder, oval, and just to screw with it, let's do, um, well, you probably already see it that I messed it up on purpose, but I can't continue, right? Oh no, what do I do? Well, as we know, um, after amount is supposed to be document. So I can drag this actually like that. But wait, it's somewhere it must be still broken, right? Well, you would be right. So let's go ahead and move oval to the back, right? Let's go ahead and move thunder towards the back. Oh, why can't we do that? Do you see what's going on here? So it's interesting how they make it, right? So strike is actually going to be right over here. And now we have it correct. So it's very interesting how they do this. It's clever. And you could go in and take a look at the JavaScript if you want, but I like how they did this. It was nice drag and drop stuff. So we'll confirm and congratulations. You've done it. Now you have created your own mask, made a mask wallet that is. So here's a little QR code you can scan and get into it. So here's some very vital and truly important things you need to know. So first and foremost is the network that you're on. So because we're going to be dealing with the Ethereum network, um, it doesn't necessarily always mean mainnet. As you see here, there's Ethereum mainnet. There's the Ropston test network, Coven, Rinkleby, so on, so on, and local. This is where you see this custom RPC and local host. This eventually is going to be when we start getting into the smart contracts and we'll be working with Ganache and Truffle and um, working with that. But as of right now, we want to get off of the main network, right? Main net, because that's going to cost real money. Okay, so let's go to the um, uh, Coven test network. Now, we have no Ether in here, right? So if we wanted to basically do a project or anything, we're in trouble. So not to get too far off, um, but you could go find what's called a faucet for this test network, right? So let's just really quickly do that. Coven test network faucet, simple as that, right? And first thing that came up is the faucet. Now, they require you to log in with GitHub. Now, if you don't want to do that, 
Let's go back to MetaMask, and we could try another one here. How about Robston? And there it is, the first one here. And what are they gonna require? Okay, so they only require us to give a test account. So how do we do that? So where do we go? Oh, account one. So if we click this to the keyboard, I mean uh, clipboard, and we go back here and type this in here and hit send me test ether, let's see what happens. It says it was sent. So is it here yet? Well, it hasn't been confirmed yet. So the moment it is, it will show up here. But as of right now, we have not received that ether yet. Okay, so you might have noticed that this is now a hash, a transaction hash. What is that exactly? That basically is a transaction that stores information. Think of it as a receipt, if you will. So if we go ahead and click this, it's gonna take you to what's called Etherscan. This is vital to knowing um, in the future, if you're doing any kind of smart contracts, anything on the Ethereum network, Etherscan is the shit, okay? This is something you're gonna wanna know. Now, here in red, this is what they've told you. It's a test net transaction only. This means it has no value, right? So we see the status here. The transaction was successful. And it tells us uh, here, there was a three block confirmation. And this is actually the block. And this is the time, it was 39 seconds ago from the time we actually clicked. If we go ahead and refresh, now it was one minute ago. And now there's been six block confirmations. Basically that means it's been confirmed by six different nodes that this transaction is active and now it's spread throughout um, the network. It, it, we've had multiple, let's say miners if you will, um, confirm that this transaction is correct, active, and we know the value is one ether. Now, you might be saying, well, Lance, it says zero dollars. Yes, that's true. Here, it will show you that. But this lets you know that you got one ether, right? And this was the gas uh, price right here. How much did it cost to send us um, the money, if you will, the transaction? And this was the whole transaction fee. This is the gas price plus the gas used by the transaction itself. Now you can click this to see more information, the gas limit, the gas used by transaction, um, and the input data here. This is the binary data of what was inputted. And so this right here is important, the transaction hash. And if we go to state here, we can see what was going on and that will be another video. Uh, to break it down for you guys. And again, block, as you see here, everything going on. The block height um, and different transactions and who was it mined by? And that's this wallet basically right there, the address, if you will. And this is the reward um, that was given for it, right? And this was the difficulty. Um, and this was the size of it. This was how much gas was used. This was the limit on the amount of gas. And this is some extra data about it, right? So we'll go back. So this faucet claimed to have sent our test account ether. This told us that was true and it has been successful. So that means if we go into MetaMask tab, we should now see ether and we do. Congratulations. You've installed MetaMask, you figured out how to change networks and you figured out how to use a faucet to get ether to play with for once we start playing with the smart contracts, right? So now if you wanna see more details, you could click this and you could see when it was received, um, from what address, and that's not private information. So you might be saying, oh Lance, this is exposing you. No, it's not. And the reason being is, because normally we'll, nobody will have my um, seed phrase um, nobody's going to probably, uh, have my address in general. And, um, e even if they did have my address, it's okay. Right? Because that's public information. Remember, we can see who it's from in two. So Z zero X eight one C E. Well, what is that? That's me zero X eight one C E. Right? 
So that is public information. And just to confirm, if we go here, you see account one, that's this, right? So if we go to account details, I believe if I'm not mistaken, there you go, 0x81cece, -E -E, and there you go. It's the exact thing. Now, if I wanted to see how much this account has gotten in the past and the transactions, I can see that here. And it's received of up to one Ether, this account in general, in the method of a transfer, right? And the time that it's been, and it's been four minutes, I've been talking quite a bit, and we could see from who. You know, let's say this was Bob, you know, let's we could see what Bob has done on that account. And look at that. Bob has sent a lot of ether. Uh, looks like about a, what? Oof, quite a bit, let's say. So about 2,238,964 transactions. That's quite a bit. And you can click that to see the full list if you're interested, but otherwise, who are these people, right? We're seeing other people's addresses. So does that mean we can hack them somehow and take all their money? No, it does not. All this means and all that we know is a wallet, right? So for instance, this could be Bob, this could be Uncle Sam, this could be Gini, this could be Bikini, blah, 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 blah. This could be Sam's Club, this could be Albertson Shopping, Smith's, whatever. This could be Tesla. It doesn't matter if you have the address. All that matters is remember that uh, Wallace wallet passphrase. If somebody has that, that's it. It's game over. Uh, you do not want that to be hijacked because as of right now, you guys know my wallet uh, address and I don't care, right? Because it's test ether and I'm not doing anything in the future for it. So I don't really care if you go take that, go use it. In fact, I even encourage you to, you know, put some ether, share the account so you guys can see what it's like, play with it. But I do recommend you get your own. Now, eventually, you see this add token? Well, we're going to learn how to create our own token, put it on either a test network or our own network using Ganache. And I will show you how to create your own token to put onto the network. And you could even put it on the main net eventually if you want, but baby steps. And so let's just really quickly go around MetaMask real quick. Let's learn here, right? So as we know, if we copy this and give it to a friend or a company, whatever, they can send us money as we've seen, Ether, right? So you might be saying, well, I don't want this big thing in my way. Well, you don't have to, okay? That's the cool part. So if you click on here, this is what most of the time you're going to be interacting with, right? It's a much smaller tab, right? And so here, if you notice, it says it's not connected. Well, oh, does that mean it doesn't work? No, it just means the website you're on is not connected to your wallet. And that's okay. That's a good thing, right? Uh, two things. One, we know that the site is not attempting to get into our wallet. And two, it's not connected to the site because we're not expecting it to, right? And so as it tells you here, uh, this specific website is not connected in any way, okay? Um, and so that said, we're happy in activity here. We can see the activity. So we can now send our ether to somebody else if we wanted, but we're not going to right now, right? So we can view our account details further. We can, you know, see it on Etherscan we just did we could see connected sites but we don't have any connected sites to our account so if we had nfts and stuff you know you could then see that attached to this but again now let's say for instance we want to change networks right let's say we're done working on robston right let's say we want to go and communicate uh, to the main net for instance right um if we do that Oops, we have no money. We've been robbed. We just got robbed in this video. Wrong. We didn't. Because we're using different networks, these addresses, keep a look, 880A, 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 but wait a second. What's going on here? The addresses are the same. Yes, they are. But... 
it doesn't matter. The ether that I got from this, te this test network does not transfer to this test network and does not transfer to this test network. Or, well, actually, this is the main Ethereum network that transactions go through. It doesn't matter because the Ether that I received was on this network. And because of that, that value only exists there. Now, that's a good and a bad thing, right? So when you have your own token, that's the same kind of situation here. So you need to remember that your Ether does not, you know, go to other networks. Now, there's ways to port that, but, you know, to go to the main net, but that's a whole nother world that we want to deal with at another time. Um, and, you know, there's a lot to that. But now you can always create another account. You can add multiple uh, accounts here. If you have multiple accounts, you can add it. If you have a Trezor physical hardware wallet, or if you're like me, I once created a physical uh, Bitcoin wallet, you can connect that right here, right? So like we talked about the treasure or the ledger, you can do, do, can uh, connect that here. And they even tell you a little bit how to do that. Now, I don't have one of these wallets, so I can't teach you that, um, but we can eventually go over it. And not only that, you see this private key, this is going to be useful when we start working with Ganache um, and importing uh, accounts from our smart contract um, projects that we're going to be doing because we'll use Ganache and do it locally and I'll show you how to import that into MetaMask. MetaMask is incredibly important and powerful for everything we're going to do. There's a couple other uh, wallets. This is not the only one, but this is the only one we're focusing on right now as this is important. And again, our activities here, we can break it down. We can see the transaction of what everything was going to cost just to receive this money. And again, you can copy that transaction ID. You can go view it on Etherscan as we have, and just so you remember, this is what it looks like. And right now we've already got 72 block confirmations that happened 11 minutes ago. So it's fast. Now, of course, the transaction is super small. This is the hash for it. So we always have a way to reference the transaction itself. So if you were to go create a shopping cart site like we've done at Pippin, um, we could do smart contracts and basically always have the receipt, which is this. So you could see the address it came from and who it was delivered to. So this is a form of being able to prove a transaction if needed. Now, the only problem is this you cannot prove is owned by anyone, nor this one, right? There's nothing there that can prove that. And that is where this uh, crypto becomes an anonymous thing, right? You cannot, unless you literally get into to their wallet, you cannot say this is Lance Sidebin. You cannot say this is Best Buy. Uh, there's no way to prove that. There's no central system that can say that. Everything is decentralized, does not require you to sign up for anything. So it is literally anonymous. But that comes with a great responsibility on your part to be an adult and make sure that you don't screw yourself over. If you're going to get into crypto, you need to understand how it works and understand how easy it is to lose everything. And you will, you probably will, if you don't do exactly what I said and back up your wallet to a, a Google Drive, OneDrive, and a USB stick. Um, and potentially print it too. If you don't do that, you're going to lose everything if you have a good amount of money in there. So that's something to think about, something to remember, and um, it's a good idea. So let's really quickly go into the settings here. So for me, currency conversion is USD, but we can change it to any of these fiat currencies, right? And uh, that's important because that's nice. Now, it's not all fiat, right? You have uh, Bitcoin here, you know, um, and some other um, coins and whatnot that you can go based off of. Um, so that's neat. And so here you can choose the primary currency, ETH or fiat, right? So you have a choice. And now in this case, we're going to remain on Ether. Um, and here you can use uh, Blocky's Identicon or hide tokens without a balance. I'm going to use their Identicon. Um, hide tokens without balance. 
no, I want to see everything, right? Because we're doing development here. And if we go into advance, so we can download the state logs. Um, this basically has your address, as we've just talked about, and the sent uh, transactions. Um, and here you can sync with mobile. We're not even going to go over that. Um, I think that's maybe a mistake to have for now. Uh, well, we don't know how secure that truly is, and I can't say personally, especially, if, well, let's go over that another time. And then we have gas controls. This allows you to show the gas price and limit controls directly on the send and confirm screens. I'm going to turn this on. And hex data, we don't care about that. We'll go over that at another time. Um, now, here's what's interesting, and this might be fun, is to show conversion on test nets. This allows you, as it says, to show the fiat conversion on the test nets. So what does that mean exactly? If we click on this, wow, look at that. We know how much our one ether is worth. It's worth $3,724.73 um, currently, right? So it did the fiat conversion for me. Now, if I went back up, and went to general and I changed this to let's say uh, Canadian dollars go back here and what do you know that's equivalent to 4,511.37 Canadian dollars but as I am an American and I do normally use USD as my fiat again go back here I'll see my fiat right there 3,716.86 which is what the value is on the test network um, and then if we ever needed to, we can clear the whole transaction history. Now, it doesn't get rid of your balance or anything like that, but, you know, you can clear it. Um, and then here, um, we're not going to actually go over that right now. We'll do, handle that in another time. And here's your auto lock timer. So depending on how long you want your uh, wallet to be accessible. So right now, mine is set to five, that's the default. But if you're super paranoid, you can set it to one minute. So if we don't click this for one minute, it becomes locked. And that means we gotta type in that password. Not the long, um, super long password uh, with you know the 11 or 12 uh, word uh, password, but the password we set up. I think they call it seed password, if I'm not mistaken. I don't recall off the top of my head. But um, And here you can seek your data with three bucks. We're not even going to go over that. I think things like that are not the best idea. Um, and then if we go to contacts, here you can build a contact list, right? If you use something like what we have in the U.S. with our banks called Zelle, you can have, you know, uh, your wife, friends, family, whatever, in your list and have their addresses uh, attached to them and send them money, right? You don't have to go through the process of trying to figure it out. Much like Zelle, it's a one-time thing. You have it in there and uh, you have them forever in there. So if we click Add Contact, we can give a username and their public address, right? And the other cool thing is there's a camera. You know, right now I don't have the camera set up on my VM, but if this was my normal machine and whatnot, I could go ahead and use my webcam and scan it. Or if I, um, well, you just type in the address here otherwise, right? So that's how you can have your own little um, address book. And if we go into security and privacy, if you don't like your seed phrase, remember that's those multiple characters, we can reset it, right? No, and you know why? As I told you from the beginning, there is no way to ever get rid of that phrase. Nobody can reset it. You can never reset it. So if you listened and remembered what I said earlier, then you remember you can never reset it because it's not like the bank. You cannot change it. We are dealing with a whole nother beast here, cryptocurrency. Some things are set in stone and for a good reason right? Because if somebody could go change my seed phrase, phew, then I'm really in trouble, right? But if we did forget it, we can go back here and reveal it. But remember, gotta have that password we set. So remember I said, if you don't remember the password, don't remember anything else, you are in trouble. So let's just go take a look. And there we go. So I can copy this or I can save it to a CSV file we'll get out of that so here's 
let's do another thing. Let's go back to settings and go back to security and privacy. So we can be alert when a website um, is interacting with our ma uh, MetaMask and things like that. When they try to um, use uh, window.web3 API. Um, and so here's some interesting stuff. This is a, uh, a GUI to modify the networks. Because remember, you can do that from here inside of the wallet itself, right? And do custom RPC and essentially do the same thing or modify. But, uh, and not only that, you can learn from this um, by seeing this. Now, of course, you can't modify this, but you can see how these networks are set up um, so you can understand better. And again, localhost, you know, 1337, that is important. And the reason that's important because without that currency, uh, I'm sorry, the chain ID, you're not going to get things like ganache set up on your um, MetaMask working properly. But um, other than that, we've essentially installed MetaMask. We have learned how to copy our address to receive money from a test network. And now you know how to Google or DuckDuckGo, Bing, whatever you want to figure out how to get... Um, fake ether, test ether, if you will, from these what's called faucets. And the faucets are essentially uh, something that sprinkles money down into you. And in this case, it did for us. It sent us this transaction today, May 15th, from uh, this account, which is from that faucet. And uh, for one ether, which was equivalent to $3,711.14 USD. We learned how to change uh, the, the, the fiat currency to show us in our default currency that makes us feel happy and see what our value is in uh, currency conversion automatically so we don't have to go to Google and figure out how much our Ether is worth at this time or some conversion system. It's built into MetaMask, which is nice. And we know how we can now send money to somebody, right, using this as well. Right, so here we typed in our own wallet, so I'm not worried. And we can choose the asset we want. So in this case, it's Ether. And it tells us immediately this asset only has one Ether attached to it. And then the amount, well, how much do we want to send? You know, maybe 0 0.1 Ether, right? That would be equivalent to $371. Now, if I popped in a couple of zeros here, as you see, you know, we're becoming fractions, you know, of a penny. And we keep going, keep going, and keep going, and then, you know, it's basically nothing right now. But you go here, that's equivalent to four cents uh, American dollars, US dollars, right? And here we can set the gas price and the gas limit. Um, and uh, you then go ahead and hit uh, next. But we'll hit cancel. So you've seen it. We have it. We've been able to interact with it. We can lock our account immediately if we plan on walking away or you don't lock your computer screen, you, you can change that. Uh, we've learned that we can create multiple accounts if we want. We can see uh, our account details, uh, have a QR code to put on our website or something else that people could send us ether um, to our account. We can even change this and we could call this our uh, test crypto account right and so that's saved there and again we can export the private key if we need to or we can just copy this and send it to somebody for them to send us money and again we also learned just to confirm how we change networks and when we change networks why our ether is gone you know you thought you had you know three thousand dollars but again these are test networks the main net, if you had money in the main net, that's a different story. Then you can start jumping for joy if you had one ether. But we don't, and because we don't, well, we're poor here. So, boohoo. And we learned that eventually we're going to soon see how the local host and custom RPC works uh, for when we have our own token, when we have our smart contracts, and we use Truffle and Ganache. But otherwise, that has been the tutorial of how to install MetaMask and the basics of MetaMask and work with MetaMask and uh, have a break, breakdown of how it works exactly. So 
I appreciate your guys' time and look for the next video when we start getting a little more into actually um, setting up our environment, things that we're going to need in order to start doing truffle and ganache. And um, if those words sound like chocolate, well, you're in for a treat. Not literally, but uh, mentally, I would say. Um, so look for that and uh, see you guys in the next one.